Good morning. I'd like to make an amendment to the bulletin where it says that my sermon lesson was two. It's Q. You'll find out here very shortly. This morning, I'd like to thank you all for being here. I always like to go out in Westfield somewhere. So this morning, we're going, we're going to Eastfield this time. Many, many years ago, when TV got started, there was a TV show called I Love Lucy. And as it finished up, they were wondering what they was going to do next. So somebody thought, well, why don't we do something about science fiction? So they thought they would have a starship and then would travel through the universe. And that's how Star Trek got started. For many years, it was on TV. Well, then after it got done, then they had the next version, which was Star Trek, the next generation. Don't that sound familiar? So anyhow, they went on and had a show. They, they invited Luke Picard to be the, the man that to be the man in charge. But then to make things different, they decided to change things around. And they had a bunch of men who was called, the Quint I can't pronounce what it is at the moment, it'll come to me. But anyhow, they were almost like they were protectors of the universe. Each one of them had a different spot, and they was, the idea was to was keep peace, make things happen, make things grow. Well, they had one, and his name was Q. Now, Q was a, was a mischief maker. He was a problem child. He liked to go and pick on people. He liked to do th things to make people laugh, especially himself. And because of that, they come around and decide, well, you know, you're not doing your job, so what we're going to do is we're going to make you a human, put you on this starship, and wherever it go goes, we can get rid of you. So when he became a human, he couldn't believe it. He said, this is how you people actually act around here? So as he was walking down the hall, he was used to just vaporizing, going right through the wall, where he walked right into it. So he got his first verse of what, you were at, what it was like to be a human. So then the next step was his stomach was growling. And somebody made a remark, well, maybe it's empty. And he, said, he says, well, I'd like a chocolate milkshake. Instead, he said, well, I'm really hungry. I'd like to have about four of them. So they had four of them on the counter. He took a taste of one. He said, you know, I'm full now. So he had a lot to be understanding about being a human. So because of that, the whole sh that whole program at that time was based around him becoming a human. Can you imagine what the world would be like if our God was like that? Uh, the humor and the laughter, we would never know if he was happy toward us or sad at us. Or if that maybe that, well, we would have to go out and do something to keep him happy in order to keep what we want. But you know, I'm glad because even back in Israel's day, they had... They had statues. They didn't have ones that actually moved, but they had like clay ones that they made in their mind thinking that that what they would worship. They had, they had ones that would call Baal, and they would, they would actually worship their firstborn to them in order to have like a good crop or something. And it, to me, that just, found, that just goes beyond the fathom of reality that somebody would worship an idol like that. But... Some people worship their cars or stuff like this. I know years ago, a girl, a guy had told me he went on an ambulance run, and he, he said that he stopped and heard somebody screaming and crying. He was afraid to go down there. So when the cop come, they went down, and here was this teenage girl hugging her car because it had gotten wrecked. That was her idol. So this morning, with the Christmas season coming on, I thought it would be kind of neat that we talk about our God and, and see why we... We want him to be our God. And I think it's very interesting because the scriptures is just full of all sorts of wonderful things. I want to go to the very beginning of the Bible. You know, the Bible's a reference about what goes on anymore because it seems like when you try to get the news, the news don't have it. So I go to, I've been listening to Christian radio and I've been learning a lot now. So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty and dark was over it and the surface of the deep and the spirit was God was hovering over it. You know, hovering is an action. It's, a, it's, a, it's like they're just waiting for it to happen. I have a cat and I have a bay window and a railing out in front of it. And as soon as the bird sits there, the cat jumps up and he's just appalling and jumping and he's making noises. He's just ready to attack that bird. See, that's how God, God was when he's seen this rock floating in the, out in the wilderness, out in the void of space. He said, you know what, I'm going to make something of this. I'm going to make it something special. I'm going to make it that it's going to be 
that, that's going to have people, and they're going to be my people, and I'm going to love these people, and I'm, a hope, and I'm going to give them free will, and they're going to love me back. Well, it worked one way, but not the other. But God still loves us. God is love, right? God is love, huh? God is love? Okay, God is love. Now let us think of it this way, too. When Mary, before Mary was born, the angel come and said, and said to her, the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Now, how many of you have had a hot day and you enjoy sitting underneath the shade tree? Ain't that nice? You're out there working, it's sweating, you sit underneath the shade tree, it's nice and cool. You know, God is not, is powerful, but he's also loving. And he goes up to Mary and he's like, a shadow of what he is. He's like, he goes up to her and says, I'm going to overshadow you. Don't be afraid because I want to do great things with you. I want you to hold my son. I want you to carry my son. I want you to be special for that. You're going to be known through all generations because of it. But he goes up to her and, and Mary says, your will be done. You know, God loves us to the point that he gave his only son. You know, some time ago, somebody made a remark, why did God have to give his son? Why couldn't anybody else done it? Well, how many of you tried to clean up a dirty mess with a dirty mop? It don't work, does it? Or if, you're, or if you've got a countertop and it's sticky, and you take that sticky rag and you wipe it, what happens? It makes it worse, don't it? So anyhow... God had to have somebody special. So he sent his son. Because God was sin because God's son was sinless. He did not have a sin in his body. He resisted the devil. He was perfect. And because of that, it took God's son to do it. It took God's son to clean up the mess that we made. But you know though, there was another episode in the Bible to where somebody else God told him to, 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 to use his son. That was, that was Abraham and Isaac. Abraham told him one day, he said, Abraham, and he said, yes, God. He said, I want you to do something for me. I want you to, um, to um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Kill your son for me. I want you to, um, let's see if I can find it. Let's see if I can find it here. Anyhow, Anyhow, he's got the words for it. And it's kind of like, he says, your only son, the son you love. And he kind of like goes on. It's like, he says, he just keeps going on. Like, you know, your only son, the one you have, the one that I give you. He says, I want you to take him up on the mountain. I want you to prove to me that you love me to the point that you'll kill your son. So he took him up on the mountain and he tied him up. And when he went to pull his knife out and he pulled it back, the angel grabbed him and said, wait, you passed the test. You're going to be the father of a great nation because of what you showed God today. You know, we have to think about these things in our lives. You know, sometimes God wants us to do things that we can't understand. Years ago, I had a Sunday school class, and the, and the preacher come up to me and said, you know, they need a camp counselor down at Camp Woodbrook. And I said to myself, well, I don't know. I'll find out. Well, when I went to Sunday school class, here was these kids with all these cookies and stuff, and they were begging and pleading me to go down there. And I said, well, I guess it's the Lord's will, you know. The Lord has a funny way of doing things sometimes, but he cares about us, and he wants us to show love for him. So anyhow, let's go on here. Psalm 139, 13 through 16. I know we got a lot. We got a lot of people out here that are quilters. You know what a quilt is. My grandmother used to go around the house and she would have scrap pieces of uh, material. She cut a little piece out, of maybe my grandfather's shirt that wasn't all wore out, or a piece out, of maybe somebody's blanket, or maybe a piece out of a out of an old shirt or a pair of pants. And before you know it, she had a quilt made out of it, and she could tell you what piece was this and what piece was that. And that's how God knits us together. You see, God, everybody thinks that, uh, that everybody, if they want to have a child, they can have it. Well, me and my wife wanted to have children as soon as we got married, but she had uh, uvarian cancer and she couldn't do it. 
but that's okay. You see, God give her children. She rode the handicap bus. And because of that, all these kids on the bus started calling her, Aunt Pay, Aunt Pay, can you look at my homework for me? Can you, uh, I got a boyfriend, I'm going to tell you about her. And she, she would talk to these kids the whole time they were on the bus, and then when they got on off the bus, she still talked to them. And <laughs> my voice is about ready to go in. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they were her children. She had children. They might not have been through her loins, but they were children to her, and she loved them dearly. So as we go on, I want us to think of something else. And that is, is that, um, you know, they talk about idols. They talk about idols in the Old Testament, about how Israel always strayed, and they always had an idol. They always had an idol of somebody else's. And it's like, okay, if they're so powerful, Gideon went, went out one night. The Lord told him to do this. So the Lord told Gideon, I want you to go out there. And all the idols you see in front of houses or, or in the town square, I want you to break them down. Break them completely, all the pieces. And I want, I want you to put an idol, not an idol, but I want you to do a burnt sacrifice for me in front of the square that night. So she, he went out there and had the sacrifice burning. Everybody come out. What happened to the idols? What happened to the idols? They all got broke up. He said, well, they wanted, to, they wanted to kill him. And, he said, and his father came out and said, wait a minute, wait a minute. If, that's, if, that, if their idol is so great, why do you have to stand up for them? Let them do it. They're so great. Let them strike them down with lightning or, or something kind of terrible disease. And they thought, you know, you're right. Let them do it. If they're so great and powerful, let them do it. And nothing happened. <laughs> I just love that, you know, when God knows what's going on. But, uh, but one thing I'd like to think about is, and that's true, that God gave his son for us. God was so loving for us that he was willing to sacrifice his only son. And here it is that time of year again, that, that we know that uh, when he come down, that the one song said that he left his glory by. That means that when he come from up wherever he was at, up in the heavens, that he was a spirit. The Bible says that God's not man, he's a spirit. So Jesus is a spirit. So therefore, he's not constrained by a human body. He don't have to eat. He don't have to worry about hitting his finger. He don't have to worry about scratching his feet. He can do whatever he wants to. And because of that, when he come down to earth, the song said he left his glory by yeah, he give up a lot of things to come here, but he could still heal. He could still do a lot of things. He could feed the 5,000. He could bring people back to life. He could let, let, heal the leper. But then people come by and wanted to be fed. They wanted to be healed, but then nobody wanted to listen to what he had to say. He come down originally to tell people that God loves you. Plain and simple. He loves you. He loves you so much that I come to come upon a cruel cross. He had to come down for that. And part of my scripture lesson was about, about as he lay there in the garden, he said to the Father, not my will, but thy being done. How many times in our lives have we been, been willing to step out of our way to do what the Father wants us to be? There's been times where I've been told by the Father to do something, and I've done it, and I can see the results. And then there's been times I didn't do it, and then I felt really bad about it because I wondered, what, what could I have done for the for Father's kingdom if I would have done it? So now, whenever I get a call, whatever happens, I'm going to do it for the Lord because I know he's got great things for me. And I know, know that my wife is up there waiting for me. That's why I try to stay as good as I can because I have a goal. I want to see my wife. I want to see Jesus. I want to see God. I want to see what heaven is like, because I'll be spending the rest of all eternity there. You know, I want you to repeat after me. i got a little thing here I want to do, and I want you to say, His love endures forever. Can you do that for me? Okay. Say it. His love endures Okay. Okay. Let Israel say, let the house of Aaron say, His love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His love endures forever. 
Let Long Meadow Church say, Let's bow. Dear great and loving God, I thank you. I thank you for this chance. I thank you that I may have touched the heart or strengthened somebody or give compassion. But most of all, you know it's love. Your love come down at Christmas. He come down the manger. He was born of a virgin in human form as a baby, much like any other baby, but he was the son of God. Dear God, as we continue this week, bless us, guide us, strengthen us. But most of all, thank you for your love. Amen. Amen. Yeah.